Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce Blender 4.2 beta and its new features. In the download area navigate to experimental section. Here you can see the 4.2 beta. Previously I introduced the alpha version. With the latest updates you can review the changes in each version of Blender. Let's select Blender 4.2. This list outlines the changes in each section, such as core, EV or animation. However, I will focus on introducing the new key features and omit some changes. Let's get it started. The real-time render engine in Blender is now EV Next. EV Legacy has been removed. EVNX is more stable and provides better shadows, eliminating flickering. Here I explain some details about EVNX. You can watch the tutorial. There are still some issues, but it's a significant improvement. The first feature relates to compositor section. Let's open that. I have a set of nodes in this project. It's kind of messy, but disregarded. Processes, especially those involving heavy nodes such as glare, can take a while. Adding more nodes increases the time, so how can we reduce this? In the render settings and performance, I can adjust it in compositor settings. Now the GPU handles the composition, resulting in very fast processing. Additionally, you can enable viewport compositing to preview changes in real time. In the viewport, click on the arrow icon and then go to the compositor section. Right here, you can choose always or camera. Selecting always lets you view the compositor result regardless of the camera, but it may slightly slow down your workflow. Let's make a change such as adjusting lens distortion. Good. Connect the final result to the viewer not to see it in real time. Several capabilities have also been added. Press Ctrl A and search for the glare. It's useful for enhancing scenes with glare and bloom. In the type section, bloom has been added. This option provides a better and optimized version of glare. It performs calculations quickly, especially in real-time compositing. I want to apply my existing glare node to view the result. Ok, let's go back to the scene. As you can see, there's more bloom in the scene, and it appears softer. Now I need to increase the size and also reduce the threshold slightly. The value is too high. Lower values can spread the bloom more effectively. Ok, done. The next option provided by Blender is related to Blur. Let's add a blur. If we look at the blur type, there's a fast Gaussian option here. It's an optimized and fast version of Gaussian Blur, but there's a problem. It doesn't work in real time. Some nodes cannot be executed in real time. Let's connect it to the result to see what happens. If I modify the blur values, nothing changes here, and I can't see any effects in real time. However, you can try it in the final render to see its speed. Another improvement is that the undo process has been accelerated. In some cases, especially in large scenes, applying undo could take a while in the past. Now this process is much faster. We are using the new EV, and you may be aware that it has shadow leaking issues. If I add an area light using Ctrl A to the scene, I can show you the problem. You can watch the tutorial on lighting the scene and tips. The link is also in the description. I want to place the light behind the creature to create a strong rim light. Ok, now I need to increase the power of the light significantly. The scene is very large, so I need a high power setting. I've set it to 50 million watts. I think I need more. 50 is not enough. Ok, now it's good. 
As you can see, the light is passing through the skin, causing shadow leaks. We need to go to the render settings and activate jittered under sampling. I need to activate it on the light itself. This will create shadow mask and contact shadow. In the light settings under shadows, let's activate jitter. Then I need to reduce the jitter percentage to refine the light mask. Now you can see there's no shadow leakage here. Additionally, you can adjust the filter and resolution fields to add more details. Lowering the filter values can increase the mask around the light. The next thing is in the material section, a thickness parameter has been added. This is useful when you want to control subsurface or have more control over refraction. If you want to learn about the skin shader and subsurface, you can watch the tutorial here. The next feature is related to probes. Press Ctrl A to add a sphere light probe. Let's bring it closer to this creature. Press S to scale it up, or you can increase the radius field of the probe. Then I need to reduce the roughness to achieve a more wet skin appearance. Alright, now I can see the effect of the sphere light probe. Actually, it provides real-time light reflection and indirect lighting, and it's almost optimized. Another feature is also related to probes. Press Ctrl A to add a volume probe. I need to place it in the last position, and then scale it up. Then let's increase the resolution. I want to test the baking time. I explained the volume probe in the EV tips tutorial. You can watch it here. The points are high and it will provide good indirect lighting. Let's increase the intensity a bit. Then press the bake button. The process is much faster than before in version 4.2. As you can see, it's faster and offers higher quality, as Blender itself mentions in the docs. Another feature is motion blur in the viewport, but it only works in camera mode. In the render settings, go to the motion blur section and activate it. Earlier, I set the shutter to 10. In simple terms, the shutter controls the strength. The other fills are good. I don't need to change them. If I move the frames, you can see the effect of the motion blur. It's good. Now let's disable it and try again. The next is that world volume now supports far distances. But what is the world volume? In the world settings, go to the volume and select the principal volume shader. Everything is dark. I need to adjust the values. Let's add a bit of emission. The density is too high. Now it supports far distances, as you can see, while maintaining good performance. I've introduced some key new features. There are also other features worth trying, such as the Kronos tool, which is a color manager that can enhance the tone. In these renders, as you can see, the third render has more brightness. Many other features have been added and you can check out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or ideas, feel free to share them in the comments.